God's got good things. We're going after God. You know, yes. I'm just excited because this whole month of May, God has some great things in store. Absolutely. And I don't want to miss one moment. Yeah. Tell somebody beside you, don't miss a moment. Don't miss a moment. You don't want to miss a moment that God has just that very moment that God has specifically for you. And so this week, God... Get ready because God has more in store. This is not the yeah. end. This is what God is. He's moving in this house. Yes. Next Sunday, we have Mother's Day, yeah, which gonna is going to be a great day. I hope that you've invited your moms to attend or if you're a mom that you've invited your kids to come All right, next so, Sunday. So, so if you're a child, invite, invite your, mom. your mom. If you And then if, you know, if you're a mom, ask your children. Right. Listen, they ask you to come to all kinds of things, don't they? Yes, well, they why do. don't you ask them to come to God's house on Mother's Day? Yes. Amen. Yes. So yes. tell you, invite your moms to come too. Yes. yes. Invite them to come. It's going to be a great day at HWC. But you know what? As much as I'm excited for next week, we have something. We have a powerful message for next week. Yeah. We have a, something for every mother. It's going gifts, to be a great gifts day. For every gifts mom. for every mom who, who comes next week. But as excited as I am for that, I can't wait because in two weeks, it's Pentecost Sunday. <laughs> It's Pentecost Sunday, and the Holy Spirit is about to show up in such a powerful way Amen. at Harvest Worship Center. You know, our other campuses, they're going to be joining us for that one power packed So, so all Sunday. of our campuses, even like in, in Columbia in and Columbia, in Costa Rica, Costa they're, they're going to they're they're come gonna online. They're going to be joining online. Yeah. We're going to be streaming. It's going to be a power packed Sunday, and I just can't wait for what God, you know, God is moving. God is moving. You know, you, we see it here, right here in this place right now. But, I, you know, this week I had so many people have, have been telling us right. this week, the last week, that as, as we've been talking about the Holy Spirit, that they've been experiencing him working in new ways in their lives. Right. I mean, that's exciting and, to and me. And they're learning what the Holy Spirit's doing. Sometimes right. people are like, this happened to me. It didn't happen to me before. I, we but heard this multiple yes, times yes. from people saying, this happened to me. It hadn't happened to me before. And I went, wow, that's God. Look at right. through this. It helped me know, know what I was supposed to do in this situation. Exactly. Some said, you know, I've seen visions. Some shared with us, I've had dreams that are from the Holy Spirit. Some said, I've had prophetic words. I've never had that before. Some said, you know, God gave me word. The Holy Spirit gave me words of knowledge. I didn't know what it was before. But through the teaching, now I understand it. And I believe this, that the more we passionately desire, the Holy Spirit, the more that you're going to experience him working in your life. Amen. And it's exciting. The Christian life is not boring. It's not dull. It's powerful. It's exciting. It's exhilarating. There's God is doing some powerful things in our lives. Amen. And I want you to get ready because God has more in store for you. Amen. God has more in store for you. Tell somebody around you, God has more in store for you. God's got more in store for you. Church, I've come to tell you today that we need to be filled and empowered with the yes. Holy Ghost. Yes. Let me tell you, this isn't just for a Sunday. This is yes. for every day. Every day. God wants every us day. to live filled, not just on a religious day, right. not just one day a week, right. but seven days a week. Yes. Hallelujah. We need to be baptized and filled with the yes. Holy Spirit. Yes. Now here is what Jesus said to his disciples about what does it mean to be baptized in the Spirit. So right. here's, what he told, here's what Jesus told his disciples right. in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. And this is what he said. He gave, it starts with, he gave them this command. Stop right here. Right. This wasn't a suggestion. This wasn't right. a recommendation. This wasn't an optional activity. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. sometimes people say, well, we're going to do this, and if you'd like to join us. Jesus said, no, no, this, listen, I got a command. Here's the command. Right. You need to get here. You don't right. need, this isn't something that's optional. This isn't just recreational. Right. This is something that is essential for your life and for, right. for your faith. So Jesus, not a person, Jesus, it starts with, gave this command. Right. And what is this command? The command was about how they, that they can be effective in their life and right. faith. That they will right. stand out, not just from other religions, but stand out as people. Because right. God is in them, working yes. in them, and working through yes. them. And here's what Jesus went on to say. 
He said, do not leave Jerusalem. That's where they were. He said, don't leave this place. Right. Oh, but God, we got family. Don't leave Jerusalem. God, we got a lot of things going on. Don't leave Jerusalem. Right. Oh, but God, I, 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 I made some prior commitments. Oh, come on. You didn't think some of those people had prior commitments? Oh, my. Yep. You didn't think some of those people had pressing activities? Oh you didn't think some of those people had jobs to go to? But Jesus said to those people, do not re uh, leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised. And okay. God promised in Joel chapter 2 that in the last days yes. he would pour yes. out his spirit yes, on did. all people. Yes. And Je Jesus wanted to know, don't leave until you wait and receive the gift my father promised. Right. right. And then here's the good thing. Jesus says, he says, Wait for the gift my, promise, my father promised, which you heard me speak about. You know what's a shame to me? Sometimes churches don't speak about the promise of the father. Mm. I know people, sometimes they go to church for years and they don't hear about the promise of the father. Right, right. You're like, what it's is true. this promise of the father? What is this of the Holy Spirit baptized? What is all this about? And see, the problem is that Jesus didn't ignore this, but he says, you heard me talk about this before. Right. This is not something new. This is not something unusual. He right. says, I want you to wait for, uh, till you get the gift my father promised. And it says, for John baptized you in water, but in a few days. Hallelujah. Yes. I, in two weeks. Hallelujah. Yes. In a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Now, that, that's what he said to the disciples. Jesus promised his church that he would baptize them in the Holy Spirit. Now, I, you know, Pam, you know what I find interesting? Jesus used this word, he would baptize them in the Holy Spirit. But he used the exact same word, baptize in the Spirit, that we see in Scripture for baptize in water. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think by accident they used the same word, baptize in water, or Baptize the spirit or baptize the church. Do you think they use this baptize word by accident? No, this was intentional. Right. This was not an accident. And this word baptize in this text, literally where Jesus used this word, baptize means to be completely immersed and to be saturated right. in. Right, right. Here's my thing we got to go. Right, Jesus right. saying you need to be completely immersed and saturated in the Holy Spirit. So here's my question today. If you're a Christian, are you completely immersed? Oh my. Oh my. Are you completely immersed in the Holy Ghost? See, I can't answer that for you, but I think you might know. And listen to me. If you say, well, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm only 50% or 75 or maybe I don't even know where I am. Listen to me. You can know yes. today. I want you to know yes. that you don't have to be satisfied with right. a part. But God says, I'll give you all. If you'll just reach out and say, yes. God, I want to be baptized. I want to be immersed. I want to be yes. saturated, saturated in the spirit of God. You see, when we baptize people in water... We don't just sprinkle a little bit on them. Right. Right. You know, that looks nice. We don't just sprinkle it on them. We fully immerse them in water. Right. We, we do what the word says here, the meaning of the word says in this right. text, and we put them under the water completely right. yeah. so they are immersed from the top of their head right. to the bottom of their feet. Right. They're completely saturated right. in the water which yeah. they are. And right. this same picture is what Jesus wants us to know, that he wants the Holy Spirit to do in our lives. He wants to fully immerse you. Mm -hmm. He wants yeah. it around. Listen, when you get baptized in water and you go down in that water completely, listen, Listen to me. It goes everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you have your arms shut, you get up under your arms are wet. It, the water goes everywhere. Yeah. And Jesus said, that's the way it is with the spirit. I don't want it just to touch a little bit of you. I want it to literally touch every single part of you. I want it to go everywhere. Yeah. I want it to change what you do, change how you live. Woo. Jesus wants us to be saturated, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You see, when the word uses the word baptized in the spirit and the word and, and the Bible uses this word fill with the spirit, right. they're, the, they're used in the same way. They refer to the same thing. Right. So when it's saying baptized in the spirit and filled yeah. with the spirit, it's the Bible's talking about the same thing happening in our lives. Right. 
it's using two different words to help us understand what the Spirit of God wants to do in us. Right. So then the question is, for some people ask, they say, well, how do I know if I've been baptized? Or how do I know if I've been filled with the Spirit? Mm, well, that's, that's a good, a good question. question. You know, are we just supposed to come to church and we praise and say, oh, wasn't that good? I felt goosebumps. I'm filled. That's not what the Bible says. Right. right. Oh, that was a really good service. I just felt better when I left. You know, I got filled. Well, that's actually not what the word says. Those are good things. Nothing wrong with those things. But how do we know, according to the Bible, when we're baptized and filled? Now, I can't give you all the scriptures to deal with today. There's there's too much. But I'm going to just give you a few. We're going to look at them today. Is that all right? So that you can know and have confidence. How do you walk baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit? Not one day a week, but every Every day. day. If that's you, turn your person and say, I'm ready for that today. I'm ready for that today. Well, here's what it says in Acts chapter 2, verse 4. And it, it, it makes it clear that on the day of Pentecost, here's what it says. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. How many were filled? All of them. How many people were filled on the day of Pentecost? All. All, so everyone that was there on the day of Pentecost was filled, right. all right? Not right. some, not mostly. You know, sometimes people come to church or they come to an altar and a few people get it. And we say, isn't that nice? A few people got it. No, here, here it tells on the day of Pentecost, all were filled with the Spirit. Right. Right. And the text goes on and says, and, so the, all of them were filled with the Spirit and, everybody say, and, and, began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So their speaking wasn't from their head. Their right. speaking was by the Holy Spirit who caused it. He enabled it. He empowered it. He made it happen. And so here it is. All of them were filled. And so here it is the thing. What happened when they were filled? They spoke in tongues. What happened when they were filled? They spoke in tongues. Is that my opinion? No. Is that God's word? Yes. So God's word says that they were all filled, and when they were filled, they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God enabled them. So there was a physical manifestation to a spiritual thing that was happening inside of them. So what was happening in them was the Spirit was coming in them, but the physical response was that they spoke in other tongues in languages they had not learned as the Spirit enabled them. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, how do we know they were filled? God doesn't want you to guess or wonder if you're filled. He gave them a sign so they'll know they're filled. And he told them this, you'll know you're filled. And I I don't want you to uh, question it or wonder it. It says, and the sign that they were filled with the Spirit is they will speak in other tongues. That's a sign that they were filled, that they spoke in other tongues. And you listen to me, not just as a one-time event on Pentecost, but that's an everyday event for us. So listen to me. If you don't have that gift of the Holy Spirit, then get ready because God's going to release it. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. If you do have that gift, then here's the deal. This is something we don't just use on Sunday. You know, our problem is that sometimes we use the gift of the Holy Spirit, the baptism, the infilling of the Spirit. We use it for a show. Oh, my. Church, aren't I spiritual? Don't, uh, don't adulterate. The filling of the Spirit. Right. Don't play with it. Don't mess with it. He, he literally, here it is. So, so some people use the baptism just for a show. Aren't I spiritual? He, you're not more spiritual or less spiritual if you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Right. What it is is God says, it's a gift. I want to give it to you. I have those that are hungry, those that are open. Yes. I don't want you just to have it on Sunday, but I want you to have it every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. He wants us to have this. So what does this mean, speaking in tongues? What this is, is the Holy Spirit giving an ability to speak in a language that you've never learned. Okay. That language can be a language. So here it is in Acts 2. Jesus said, wait for the promise of the Father. Right. It was a command to wait in Jerusalem. Don't go anywhere. Set aside every other priority. Not to say the priorities were bad, but set aside everyone because this priority trumps all the other ones. Right. All right. And he says, okay, now stand there, wait till you receive the Holy Spirit. Right. And, and, and what happened when they received? They began to speak, to in, speak other in other tongues. So t- in this tongues, this baptism of the Spirit, tongues, baptism of the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, all the same. Right. Are you following me? Right. Tongues, baptism of the Spirit, filled with all, all the, the same, same yeah. thing. Right. Same manifestation. Right. It's, it's different 
applications of the I'm same, the same thing. manifestation right so that manifestation is that we speak in a language it can be a language that's somewhere in the world but you haven't learned it it could be a language from heaven that nobody else in the world speaks but that God has given to you but the key is that tongues is not a language that you learned on your own it's not a language that somebody else taught you you know it's not that somebody says well you know now you just say these things after me no it's it's enabled by the Holy Spirit. And he says he will enable you. That's what it says in Acts chapter 2. They spoke in other tongues as enabled, as given the ability by the Holy Spirit. So here's the question. Who is speaking in tongues for? This verse in Acts chapter 2 verse 4 says all of them were filled and spoke in other tongues. Yes. All of all of the 120 who were in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. Yeah, you know what I find really interesting, Pam? These 120 believers were in the upper room on the day of Pentecost, and it says they all spoke in tongues. Yes. Now that means all these disciples who walked with Jesus, they were in the upper room. They didn't get baptized and filled until the upper room. Right. So that means right. James, John, Peter were all baptized and spoke in tongues in the upper right. room. Not just those disciples, because we know Jesus only had 12 disciples minus one. Judas, he, he, he left the flock, right? So th- th- it wasn't just the 12 or the 11. He, there was all kinds of other believers to make up the 120 right. yeah. people who believed in Jesus who yeah. said he commanded us to wait till we get the, the promise of the Father. We're going to do that. So there were all kinds of just ordinary people that right. were gathered together yes. that would... That, that, God empowered them and they spoke in tongues. Right, Not right. just the apostles, but for all of us. Right. Somebody tells you, oh, it's just the apostles. Well, then they misunderstood. They didn't read the text because in the upper room, in the 120, there was more than the apostles in that room. Right. Now, did you ever notice when you read that of the 120, and, and part of it tells some of the people but doesn't list them all, of the 120 that are in the upper room. Do you know that Mary... Jesus' mother right. was in the upper room yep. when they were all filled. That means Mary, yes. Jesus' mother, spoke right. in other tongues. Right, yes. Oh. Now listen, to all my Catholic friends, do you hear this? Jesus' mother needed the promise of yes. the Spirit. The same way yes. you and me need right. the promise of the Spirit. Right. Listen to me. Mary was a good person. Right. She was handpicked by God yes. and given an important assignment. But you see, even though she was handpicked by right. God, given an important assignment, yes. she, needs to, she still yes. needed to be filled with the Spirit yes. like you and me. Hallelujah. Woo. Woo. You see, this promise that Jesus gave, that he would baptize you in the Holy Ghost is, yeah. with the evidence of speaking in tongues, is for everyone, including you today. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Tell somebody beside you right now. Just look at the person beside you. Tell them right now. Being baptized in the Spirit is God's promise for you. Being baptized in the Spirit is God's promise for you. Now, see, you see, here's the thing. This this upper room experience and it didn't just happen in the upper room on the one day i'm going to show you that in a second but this upper room experience literally launched the church but it also empowered the church and literally as all these people were baptized it changed their life and it changed what god did pam it reminds me a number of years ago i was speaking a crusade and they asked me if i would speak on the baptism of spirit it was a multi-church thing and so i said yes i'd be happy to and, and, and so I preached about the baptism of the Spirit in this packed out uh, little room. is packed out right all the back wall. I preached about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I preached about what the Bible says about speaking in other tongues, and I preached about it. Well, then we came time for the altar, and I did something that I've almost never done in my entire ministry. But I believe that God gave me a prophetic word. And I stood before those people and I said to them, everyone who will come forward right now will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speak in other tongues. And after I said, I was like, ooh. Because you know what? I'm, it's, either, I'm, it's either true or I'm a heretic, one of the two. And I just said something that you can measure. You ever know right. sometimes people give all these words that you can't measure? Yeah. But sometimes you have to have words that can be measured, measure. that can be proven true right. or false. Are you hearing me? See, when it's prophetic, then you know what? It's God that does it anyway, so you just got to let it go, all right? And this was not a word with condition. This was a word, if you will come right now, you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So I thought, well, it's out there. 
I said it. I might as well keep going all the way in. I'm, I'm, I'm halfway in the water now. You know, I might as well just keep going. So I said to one of the leaders, all right, we're going to begin to pray. And I want you out loud, loud, start to count as they get it. All right? So one starts speaking in tongues. One. Another one starts. Two. Another one starts. Three. Another one starts. Four. Another one starts. Five. Another one starts six, and he keeps going. Well, people start to get excited. And now all of a sudden, some people who were a little concerned or not sure or wondering or I don't know what was in there, they start running forward because they, they don't want to miss it. But isn't it, I've got to tell you something very interesting. Of the original group of people who came forward, 100% of that group were baptized in the Holy Spirit and spoke in other tongues. Now... Only about 50% of the other group that ran forward after the call got it. Isn't it interesting? Because here's the thing. You know, Simon the sorcerer wanted this gift. Yes, he did. You know, the Bible says that the people were baptized in the Holy Spirit, and Simon wanted to buy the gift. Here's my question. If the gift of being filled with the Spirit right. didn't come with a manifestation, what does a magician want to buy? Right. Right. He wants to buy something that others can right. see. He, right. he, he wants to buy something that others can see a difference. And so Simon literally said, let me buy this. See, he wanted, he wanted this gift from God, but he didn't want to get it God's way. He wanted to buy this gift right. so that he could build up his sorcery right. business right. and make more money. But I'll tell you this, God doesn't release it for that reason. Right. God doesn't release it for that purpose. Right. And as those people ran to the altar, only half of the other ones got it. Why? I don't know their heart. I don't know what was in them. I don't know why they wanted to come, but God did. Yes. And I'll tell you, this gift of the Holy Spirit is for... Now, li listen. Listen, Pam. I, I, I know I'm talking a lot. I, I'm going to give... Li, li, li. I, I'm just, I tell you this. I just believe in this. I've seen it over years. I've seen thousands of people receive it. I listen, tens of thousands of people. I personally pray for. God is baptized and they received it. It's changed their life. It's empowered them and pushed them forward in ministry. So this isn't something I play with. This, I, I say this is a command from Jesus. Wait till you get the promise. And I'll tell you this. It's too, too many churches. I'm not talking about too many churches trying to just sell it soft. Well, if you want it, okay. If you don't want it, it doesn't matter. No, Jesus said you need it. Yeah. So here's my report. You need yeah. it. Yeah. So listen, I, 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 I'll tell you, I'm going to give you a few scriptures. I can't get them all, but I'm going to give you. Listen to Acts chapter 10, verse 44 and verse 46. Listen to what it says here uh, uh, about the baptism. It says, while Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell on all those who heard the word. And those of the circumcised who believed, all right, the circumcised mean they were, they were Jewish believers. Yeah. Yeah. They believed them. Those of the circumcised, the circumcised who believed were astonished. Mm. So they sat back and they were like, what in the world is going on? Well, why were they astonished? Because they were astonished because the Holy Spirit. See, these people thought they had the, he was right. their God and yes. their God only. Mm -hmm. But they were astonished because the Holy Spirit had been poured on the Gentiles also. Right. How do we know the Spirit had been poured on them? Because the, all these non-Jews, that's basically all of us. I don't think we have any Jewish-born people in the room today, all right? Nothing wrong with Jewish-born people. I don't think we have any room. That makes you a Gentile. Look at your neighbor and say, you a Gentile. You're a Gentile. All right, you a Gentile, but here's what the Gentile means. It means that, guess what? God didn't hold you back. God didn't give you a right. second-rate gospel. Right. God didn't give you less of him, right. but God sent the Holy Spirit to yes. the whole world. And if you're hearing God, you yes. say, God, yes, I want you. And it's been poured out. And how do we know the Spirit has been poured out on them? And this is how we know the Spirit has been poured out on them. I love this text. It says, because when the Spirit was poured out on them, they heard the them speak with tongues and magnify yeah. God. So they knew the Spirit had been poured because right. they heard. Right. They could hear they speak speaking in, tongues. in other tongues. Right. Same word, this word tongues, is the same word that it used other places, talking about a, a supernatural tongue from the Holy Spirit. Right. I love this text, pal. 
I love it because it's not just a Jewish thing. It's not just for one nation or one person, but it's for the Gentiles, so all the Jews. And so that means it's for you and for me. And, and you know, you know what's amazing, Pam? Even though we see this so clear in the Bible, like it's so obvious. Right. Sometimes you have people say, oh, it was just for those in the upper room for the launching of the church. Well, here's why they're mistaken. Right. Because Acts chapter 19, verse 6 was 27, 20, yeah, 20, 20, yeah, 27, years. 27 years after Pentecost. So this wasn't just an upper room experience, but 27 years after, after Pentecost that we read Acts chapter 19. Right. Well, what does Acts chapter 19 tell us that happened 27 years after Pentecost? So Paul was in Ephesus, and it says, when Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them. Okay. How do we know the Holy Spirit came on them? It says, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. So this was 27 years later. So there was a later. physical manifestation, manifestation to the Spirit right. baptizing them right. and filling them. And right. it was not, I wonder what it is. Right. Every time he lets us know, here's right. what happened. Right. And I love this because when Paul placed his hands. So the first time we said Peter. Peter was in the upper room. But Paul was not in, in the, the upper, upper room. room. When so how did baptized. Paul get this gift so if he was, wasn't in the upper right. room? Because they were going around and releasing it to other believers. Yeah. Are you hearing me? It was Paul right. wasn't there. And here it is. Paul was baptized. And I love yes. what it says in Acts chapter 14, verse 5. He said, I would that every one of you speaks in tongues. I love it. You know that Paul, Paul says, I speak in tongues more, more than, than all, all of you. you. And he wasn't there in the, he upper wasn't room. in the upper room. See, this isn't just an upper room experience. Right. This is a New Testament yes. church experience that God wants to fill right. us. God wants to empower yes. us. Yes. And there's a physical manifestation, manifestation. to the operation of the Spirit in right. our lives. That we speak in other tongues. I believe that this is Jesus' desire for every Christian. Yes. He wants this for your life. So then this, this is, leads to another good question right. that people have asked. Well, how long does it take to be able to speak in tongues? Right. You know, I've had people, does it take years for me to go to church? How does, well, here's the answer. Yeah, sometimes people think, oh, I'm not spiritual enough. I'm not enough. spiritual enough, or I don't, uh, haven't read the Bible I, 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 enough, yeah. or I well, don't yeah, that's know enough. When I know more of the Bible, then maybe God will give right. you the gift. The gift isn't based on your knowledge. Right. Not even based on your Bible knowledge. Right. It's not based on your goodness. Yes. It's not based on your perfective. Right. Because nobody's perfect, then nobody's nobody would perfect. get it. It's not based on any of those things. Right. It is based on our hunger yes. and our thirst to say, yes. God, I want want to be filled. Yes. I'm going to obey you. I'm going to go after right. you. Right. And so for some, they, they, we even see it when Paul, he said, have you believed? Yes. Okay. Receive the Holy Spirit and be filled and speak in other tongues. So for some, it's immediate. Yeah. And so can you pray for somebody and right away they speak in other tongues? Yes. Even if they're brand new saved, no matter where they are, saved. first time they ever heard the message, whatever it is, people can immediately be yes. baptized Fill right. with the Holy Spirit and speak in other tongues. Right, yes. But sometimes it takes time. Yeah. It takes time to pray. It takes time to tarry. Like the right. old folks used to say, we just tarry. We wait on the Lord. And the reality is that for some people, it takes longer than for others to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, I, I'm the perfect, I think I'm the perfect example for this. Right. Because, you know, the problem is that sometimes you're a thinker, instead of just receiving that we are trying to process it. And, and, and the Bible says, this is why it says, you know, we, we got to come like a little child. Right. You know, I, David, you made me smile this morning. You're just there, and, and, and then all of a sudden I look, and David's Spirit. on the ground, and I say, you see, that's childlike faith. Yes. And when yes. we have childlike faith, and then even the Bible says this, David, it says the little children will lead us. So those that have childlike faith, they'll lead the others that sometimes are trying to work in their head. And i got to be honest that sometimes I yeah. struggle to get out of my head. Mm. All right, maybe I'm the only one. But sometimes I struggle to get out of my head. And i got to be honest. So I, I saw it, this right. baptism of the Spirit, filled right. with the Spirit, was speaking in other tongues. I saw it in the Bible. I saw it was clear. I saw it was a promise for you right. and for your children and all yeah. those who are far off. I saw that, and I wanted it. But I struggled to have it in my head. So I was like, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Right. And I'll never forget, you know, I... I, I I got to this place and I said, Lord, I'm desperate. 
I'm desperate for you. I want this gift. And I was so desperate. I was on staff at a church. I was on staff at a church, and I'd hear the pastor preach on it. In the old days, pastors would sit on the platform. How distracting was that? You're looking at the driest <laughs> people in the world sitting on the platform. I don't know. And how, the, how come you're so dry if you're supposed to be a leader? How come, you, how, come, how come when you have the mic, you got energy, but when you don't have the mic, you sit there like this? Oh, my. Call it out. Call it out. Man, if you're a leader and leading, that's what leader means, leading in the way you should go, then you should be the one be like, yes, Lord! Yes, yes, yes. <sighs> well, anyways, so that's just a sidetrack, old school days. All these dry old people, drier than toast, have been left out for four days. <laughs> crack, crack, crack. <laughs> Crunchy old dry toast left out, sitting on the platform. I, was, I don't know why they did that. I'm so glad we don't do that anymore. You know, one of the first things we do when we start the church, I said, no more than sitting on the platform. Preachers, you sit in the front row. Staff members, you sit in the front row. You will lead the way. And if you can't do that, I take your resignation now. Hallelujah. Oh, my. I don't need people with this. I need people with this. Yes, yes, yes. I need people that can do it not just when, when they're got the mic, but when they're sitting down in the seat because they're leading the way. Right. Are you following me yes, today? yes. So I'd be sitting on the platform, I'm pastor of the church I went to, he's preaching on this baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I didn't have this gift, you know, I didn't have it, so you know what I did? I got up from my seat, and I walked down the steps, and I turned around, I'm like, God, I want, and you know, it's so funny, everybody in the whole church, I'm supposed to be a minister in that church, and everybody in the church knew I didn't have this gift. Pastors preach on, tell us we need it, tell us for everybody, and I don't have the gift, how come? And every, everybody knows, but see, I don't care what people know. It ain't about a show. Right. If it's in the word, I want right. it. And right. you know what? Good, here's the news. None of us got everything. None of us got it all together right, right. now. So here's what right. we do. We got to go after God. Yes. We got to be determined. It doesn't matter right. what others think. It doesn't matter what others say. I want right. God. Let me, can I tell you something? Sometimes some of you, you're limited in what God wants to do because you're more worried what somebody else will think, what somebody oh, else wow. will stay. So then instead, you Come sit on. With your, on your hands instead of getting up and lifting up your head and saying, it don't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, matter what they think. It doesn't matter what they say. Yeah. It's in God word and I'm going to go after God. Yes. Woo. Yes. So I came off the platform. I prayed. I, he, he preached on a number of times during, during my, my years there. Yeah. Every time I'd come to the altar, come to the altar, come to the altar. And I, you know, it got to be, you know, the old, the old folks, they're a little more kind, right? So every time he, I come to the altar, they're like, oh God, please, please bless Kevin. He's a young minister. He needs this gift. God bless him. He keeps coming and nothing happening. God, I love the old people. You know what I'm saying? God, the old people didn't gossip old about me. They, they, they pray for me. Uh, that's what we need in the church, not the gossip. Yes. Right. We, need, we need the prayer people, right. not the ones that judge the ministers and judge the band and judge right. those speaking and judge right. those teaching. Well, I wouldn't do it that yeah. way. Well, I'd be different. Ah, ah. You, said you need to quiet your mouth and pray in the Holy yeah. Ghost. And so I pray, I prayed, nothing happened. I remember then I, I went to, a, to a, a seminary, you know, and I was attending the seminary and they brought this, this guest preacher in. And uh, he preached on the baptism. And I got to be honest, I heard him preach. And I thought, oh, God, here we go again. I've been praying for this a hundred times and nothing's happened. But I'll tell you this. You see, sometimes, you know, what the Bible say? It says, knock. Right, yeah. And the door will be open. You, just, you know what a problem is? That sometimes you knock, and because the door didn't get answered right away, you walk, walk away. away. And then you know what happens when you walk away? Some uh, 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 you know what do they call that? A porch pirate shows oh up my. at your door and steals yes, what's meant gift. for you. You right. got to be determined that I ain't walking yeah. away. I ain't letting some porch pirate show up and take the gift that God has delivered to me. I need you to know, porch pirate, back off. I'm on guard here. I'm going after God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I never used that one. That just came to me right now. Not in my notes or not. By God. That must be the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and so I was there, and I thought, well, here we go. And he gave the altar call, and I thought, I'm going up. So here it is. I'm at a full gospel seminary where, where my assumption was 
almost everybody got this gift, this baptized and filled with the Spirit speaking tongues. That's my assumption. But I don't know. And so I'll tell you this. I didn't wait to see, who, is there going to be enough people respond to one of these, do one of these things? You have a Christian thing, you know? Head bowed, one eye open. Oh, they're responding. I'll respond. No one's responding. Spirit's not in it. Mm. I didn't do the panic. I didn't do that Christian thing that that peaked to see how everybody else is responding to determine how I would respond. I got up from my seat. I went. I think I was the first person forward. I'm not sure anybody beat me forward. Now, now there was a whole bunch of other people came. To my surprise, I wasn't the only one. A whole bunch of other people came, and they're at the front, and I'm praying. And you know what? I'm not getting it. And I'm praying. I'm not getting. I'm getting tired. I'm praying, and they they keep saying, "Just pray. Just worship Jesus. Just magnify Him." And when it comes, they go, and I'm getting tired. Have you ever had your hands up so long? Because the Bible says, "Lift up holy hands without wrath or doubting." You ever had your hands up so long your hands are getting tired? You start like this, and you go, (laughs) then you want to prop them against something. Because my, it feels like I lost my circulate. Come on, I know some of you have been there. And then I, I had some of some 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 of the some of my classmates and others in the in the seminary. They came on each side of me. They lifted my hands. Well, my hands are still lost circulation, but at least they're holding them up for me. And we're there a long time, and I can hear people speaking in tongues over here and over here and over here, and people are getting it, and I'm still there. And, and you know, I, and finally I got to this place, I said, God, however long I got to stay here tonight, I'm not leaving this place till you touch me. I've had enough of this game. Yeah. I don't care how long I got to wait them. And then within minutes, all of a sudden, there was like, the Bible says, like rivers of living water. And it began to flow out of me as I was baptized in the Holy Ghost that day. And I'll tell you, so some get it immediately. I wish I got it immediately. But I was one of those ones. Had to come and keep knocking, keep knocking, keep knocking, keep asking, keep believing. Oh, the immediate, the easy way. My way was the hard way. But it doesn't matter because when you look back, I'll say, God, thank you. Thank you for the journey. And, I, and, and so, you know, I've realized it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter. God can give it to you. And some get it immediately. Some takes a little takes while. Time. Exactly. But we need to say, God, whatever it takes. If we're hungry, if we really desire whatever it takes, yes. baptize me in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Uh, You know, how many of you say today, just saying, I want this gift? Or are you saying, I want a fresh feeling of the Spirit in my life? I want that in my life. If that's you, I just want you to right now, right right where you are, you say, yes, I want to operate in that. Just lift your hands. Lift your hands with me. I'm lifting my hands. And just say, God, I want you to fill me. Lord, I want you to fill me. I want you to saturate me with your Holy Spirit. Let him know I want you to saturate me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, that's what we want from you. We want a saturation of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Whether I've spoken in tongues for years or I've never spoken in tongues. Today, Lord, we're just saying saturate me. Saturate me. I'm longing. I believe that there are those all across this place and those who are watching us online today who are hungry, who are desperate, who are saying more of the Holy Spirit in my life. Listen, I'll tell you this. If that's you, then get ready. Get ready. God, the Bible says God is not a man that he he would lie. lie. So if God said it in his word, God promised it in his word, then God will do it and accomplish it it in your life. Yes, he will. So here, Pam, this is what I want to finish with. I want to finish with one point today. This okay. final point I want to finish with today. Why do we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Okay. Why? What's the point? So Why? you're saying, okay, it's good. Jesus commanded them to wait. Right. He said, don't go until you receive. Then why? Why right. did he command us? Why do we need this baptism? What's the point of it? Right. See, sometimes we forget the point. But listen, let me tell you this. I'm going to give you a few things. This is my final point. I want to give you a few parts under this so you'll understand. Why do you need the right. baptism of the Spirit? Turn to your person beside you say, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. You need to hear this. You need to hear this. All right. Acts chapter 4 verse 31 tells us that it will help our prayer life. Right. Now listen to me. Even the disciples said, Lord, teach us how to pray. So the disciples, listen, are you following us? Disciples walked with Jesus. Live with yes. Jesus, yes. hung out with Jesus. Finally, they got to this place and said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. Right. You know, so they felt like even though they had seen Jesus 
and they knew that God the Father was answering Jesus' prayer, they're, they, these disciples, they're not unsaved people. They're saved people. Right. They have a relationship with Jesus right. Christ. And they say, Jesus, teach us how to pray. Right. Here's the deal. We all, I, don't, I think we would all say we could use our prayer life, come to the next level. We yes. would want our prayer life yes. to be a prayer life that sees right. miracles. You yes. know, a prayer life that sees great results. Oh, I don't think it's about results. Well, then you haven't read the word. Because yes. James says this. Yes. The prayer yes. of a righteous person, righteous man, yes. the prayer of a righteous person brings great results. And so here's the thing. When we're walking in right relationship, we've asked Christ into our heart and our life. We're walking in relationship with him. He says that your prayers will bring great results. Oh. Not yes. your perfection, but your yes. desire to be in walk in relationship right. with God. Because your righteousness is not based on your good works, which are like filthy rags. Your righteousness is based on Jesus Christ, who he is and what he's done. So if it was based on my good works, then none of us can see prayers that bring results. You hearing that, Denzel? But I'm so glad today it isn't about my good works yes. and about your good works. It's yes. about Jesus Christ, who he is and what he's done. And now my reliance isn't on me. My reliance is on God right. and who he is and the promises of his word. Right. Right. And so literally, listen to this. When we get baptized in the Holy Spirit, it, it helps your prayer life. And so that we, we turn and we don't have Jesus say, Jesus teaches how to pray. He says, I've sent you the Holy Spirit and he will teach you. He will lead you. He will guide you. That's what he will do. And so listen to me. When you pray in the Spirit, why do I need to pray in the Spirit? When you pray in the Spirit, here's the deal. It always, you're always praying God's will. Right. Sometimes you say, I don't know what I should pray. I don't know if I should pray stay or if I should pray go. I don't know if I should pray sit or pray get up. I don't know if I should pray do this or don't do that. When you right. pray in the spirit, yeah. you are always praying the 100% will of God. Right. Right. Are you hearing me? So listen to me. So that means for us as believers, we need to be people that say, I need to pray in the spirit. Right. Right. Because when I pray in the Spirit, I am praying the will of God. And when you not you don't know how to pray, then guess what you need to do? There's sometimes that I'm not exactly sure what's the right answer. You know what I do? Pray, pray in the Spirit. Spirit. Listen to me. If you only pray from here, you miss right. half of what God has for you. Because sometimes what God wants for you is outside of here. Right. And the only way you can get to it is so now we pray in the Spirit and we let our prayers line up with God's will and God's purpose and God releases them in our lives. Right. So when you pray in the Spirit, you always pray God's will. Somebody say, when you pray in the Spirit, when you, pray in the Spirit you always pray God's will. You always pray God's will. Now listen to me. You don't have it. You can have it. All right. When you pray in the Spirit, listen to me, it releases God's promises over your life and over others' lives. Right. Do you know there are thousands of promises listed in the Bible that God has for you? And when you pray in the Spirit, sometimes you don't even know. You're just praying in the Spirit. And as you're praying in the Spirit, you're releasing the wow. promises of God over your life and over others' lives. Right. Now, I remember when you were baptized uh, in the Spirit when you were seven years old at an altar. Yep. And, and there was a and you were just a seven-year-old little girl. And you were there, and God baptized you. And there was a lady from Paris, France there, yeah. Parisian lady. And she was standing beside you, and she turned uh, to her mother, and she says, do you know this little child is speaking perfect Parisian French without an accent? Mm -hmm. And she's praising God and glorifying God. And you know what happened? The person changed their heart and changed their life. Yeah. I'll tell you this. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, yes. it doesn't yeah. matter if it's a known language yeah. or an unknown language. You right. are praying the will of God, right. and it releases the right. promises of God. Right. I'll tell you this. So listen to me. If you want the promises of God, all the promises of God release your life, here's what you do. Pray in the Spirit more because yeah. it releases. Everybody say, praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit. Releases the promises of God. Releases the promises of God. And there's over 8,000 promises recorded in the Bible. Wow. Closer to 9,000, actually. When you pray in the wow. Spirit, you don't even know the ones you're praying for sometimes. And God goes, you know, you think this is next? How many have done this? You think, okay, for the next step of my life, I'm going to do this. Yeah. And it doesn't happen. And right. it seems like other good things are happening, but you, 
here's the problem. Don't get your mind made up on next right, step. Right, because right. then it doesn't happen. You think God isn't listening. Right. And you're not paying attention that he's doing all Always. this. So yeah. pray in the spirit. And he won't necessarily give you your next step, but he'll give you the next right. step, the right step, the perfect right. step. He'll take you where you need to go. Can somebody right. say amen? Amen. Uh, I'm still on prayer. I, I need to spin up. Listen to this. When you pray in the spirit, you're getting, listen, you're getting in the way of the devil who's trying to stop your plans. Right, right, right. So the, the, the Bible said, Jesus told us, the enemy has come but to steal, to kill, and destroy. That's what Jesus said. This is, he goes, there's a real enemy. He's come to steal, to right. kill, and destroy. When you pray in the spirit, guess what you're doing? You're getting in the way yes. of the devil, and you're stopping right. the devil's plans that he has for your life. His plans to steal. His plans to kill. His plans to destroy. His plan to destroy your future, destroy your family, destroy your relationships, destroy the purposes of God. And when you pray in the spirit, guess what you're doing? You're stopping the enemy's plans in the spirit, not just the natural, not just with the head, but by the spirit, you push yeah. back the enemy. Yeah. Turn it every say, when you pray in the spirit, you're stopping the enemy's plans. When you pray in the spirit, you're stopping the enemy's plans. When you pray in the spirit, your prayers come into agreements with Christ's intercession. The Bible tells us that Jesus right now, right now, right. he's seated at the right hand of the father. Right, right. And it says, and he's praying and interceding for you. That's what Jesus is doing right now. Right now, he's praying for you. Right, right now, he's interceding for you. Right. And so that's what the Bible tells us. And it's now, when we pray in the Spirit, now my prayer in the Spirit yes. lines up with the intercession yes. of Jesus Christ yes. to release the purpose, the plan, and the will of God. Hallelujah. Yes. Listen to me. It's not God's will that you just be a nice believer right. when you go and go into heaven when everybody else around you is going to hell mm. oh, no. are you hearing me yeah. it's his will that you are filled with the spirit yeah. it's his will that you're praying in the holy ghost yeah. every day it's his will that you're an unstoppable yeah. force for the kingdom yeah. of god yeah. did you hear me it's god's yeah. will that you're an unstoppable yeah. force for his kingdom If you believe that, then repeat after me. It's God's will. It's God's will. That I'm an unstoppable force. That I'm an unstoppable force. For his kingdom. For his kingdom. Now, if you believe it, go ahead and give him yes. praise right now. Thank you, God. You know what that means? That means problems can't stop you. Right. You know what it means? It means pressures can't stop right. you. Yes. You know what it means? It means people can't stop right. you. Why? Because you are filled with the Holy, the Holy Ghost. Woo. Woo. How, my God, I feel like shouting. Matter of fact, I think I did. <laughs> Pam, when we're filled with the Spirit, listen to me. It, according to Acts chapter 4, verse 13 to 14, it gives you a new boldness. A boldness yes, of the Holy Spirit yes. that is beyond your natural abilities. Listen right. to me. Some of you are more bold naturally than others. Right. But when you receive this baptism, this filling of the Holy Spirit, it will give you a boldness right. beyond your natural ability. Right. You see, we live in a world today, and people are bold on all kinds of stuff. Right. Yes. Yep. They're bold about gender. Mm, okay. They hang their flags out their windows. Right. They put it on their shirts. They're bold. Right. They're bold about their stand for Israel and Palestine. Right. Oh, they wear their scarf or their drape their flag. They're right. bold about their stand. Yes. Yeah. But here's the problem. In a world that is bold on their stands for things in the world, but Christians are timid about oh their my. faith. Oh, my. Oh, my. Is there oh something my. wrong with that? They can be proud and loud, and we got to be quiet and shy. But when you get baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, you get a new boldness. Whoa, listen to me. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, God has not given us yes. the spirit yes. of fear, fear, but of power and of love, love and a sound mind. 
anything less than power, love, and a sound mind is not from God. Come on. I take authority in the name of Jesus over every spirit of timidity and fear in this place right now. I declare that spirit that will not limit you. It will not hold you back. I declare that spirit of fear is going to break in Jesus' name. Listen to me, just because it's that way right now doesn't mean it has to be. It wants to hold on until you drown. But when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, fear cannot stop you. Everyone say, break the spirit of fear. I break the spirit of fear. It's not from God. not from God. I don't accept it. I don't accept it. I don't receive it. I don't receive it. This demonic spirit will not run my life. This demonic spirit will not run my life. Or ruin my life. Or ruin my life. I will not be coerced. I will not be coerced. Or manipulated by the spirit of fear. Or manipulated by the spirit of fear. But instead. But instead. But instead. But instead. I receive the fullness of the spirit. I receive the I will spirit. walk in the boldness from the Spirit. I will walk in a boldness from the I Spirit. I will live every day filled with the Spirit. I will live every day filled H-W-C, with the Spirit. HWC Pentecost Sunday's yeah. coming. My God, there's a new boldness to your yes. faith that's about yes. to be released. Are you ready? Yes. It'll yes. cause your faith to be more effective. Are you ready? Yes. This Holy Ghost boldness is not for your agenda, but to walk out God's agenda. Yes. This Holy Ghost boldness is not just to look spiritual, but it is to walk in the yes. promises of God. Yes. The baptism of the Holy Spirit will take your faith from flat to fresh. Yes, come on. How many say, I don't want a flat faith, I want fresh faith. Yes, I want fresh faith. Your prayers will produce results. Yes. Listen to me. When you're baptized in the Spirit, your praise will hit a new level. Right, right. Come on, let's go. Are are you hearing me? I probably am the worst singer in the room. But it doesn't matter. That's not the indication of powerful praise. Right. It's the in- indication of a worship team, but it's yes. not the indication of a Christian. Right. right. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15. Listen to what it says. Check this out. This is what it says. Here it is. What is it then? Listen to this. New Testament. I will pray with the Spirit. And I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit. And I will sing with the understanding. Are you seeing this? The understanding and the Spirit are two different things. Your prayer and your praise will peak when you don't limit it to your mind. Come on. This verse tells us, pray with our mind and our Spirit. Praise with our mind and our spirit. Not one or the other, but right. both together yes. is yes. a powerful yes. prayer right. and a powerful praise. Right. Mind and spirit. When we are baptized in the spirit, it impacts your life. It impacts your church. Yes. It impacts your family. It impacts the people that you encounter. It impacts the people in your workplace. When we are filled with the Holy Spirit, We heard it last week. The manifestation of the Spirit are for the benefit of everyone. Everyone wins. Everyone wins. When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's not a selfish thing. It's a God thing. It's something that's going to impact your nation and your community and your church. God gave you the Holy Spirit 
so that you can take life past what's natural, past what's normal, into the supernatural, into the what God has for your life. If you live filled up every day, you are going to live a supernatural Christian life. I don't want to live an ordinary life. I don't want to just live in my own strength. I want to live in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. Listen to me, HWC. It's time to rise up. It's time to rise up. It's time to shake off some of that dryness. It's time to shake off some of that weariness. It's time to shake off things that were holding you back, that were intimidating you. You're not an intimidated Christian. You're a bold, spirit-filled Christian. It's time to walk in victory. You're not a defeated Christian. You're a victorious, spirit-filled Christian. It's time to live filled up. You're not a empty Christian. You're a filled up with the Holy Ghost believer flowing in the presence and the power of God. That's you today. Somebody say, that's me today. That's me today. It's for you to walk in the power of the Spirit. It's not to say, oh, well, that's good for somebody else. It's no longer just good to, good enough to say, that's good for them, but it's not for me. I'll watch. I'll observe. Maybe I'll be like the people who sat back in that meeting that you're in and said, I'm going to just sit back and observe. But I want to encourage you today. It's not time to sit back and observe. It's not a season to sit back and just observe what God is doing. It's a season to jump in to what the Spirit of God wants to do in your life, in your church, in your community. It's a season and to step in and say, I want the Spirit of God to flow and work through my life like never before. It's a season to say, I'm going to break through those barriers. I'm going to break through those barriers. I'm going to break through those barriers. Somebody needs to break through some barriers that have been in your mind. We're breaking some through some mindsets that have held you back from operating in the supernatural. Break through the barriers that have been in your mind. Break through the barriers that other people have said, oh, you know, I don't know about that Pentecostal church. I don't know about what they, but you've taken on what some other people have said and you've carried it. Don't take on what other people said. Take on what Jesus said about you. What Jesus said is that you would be clothed with power. What Jesus said is that you should be baptized in the Holy Ghost. What Jesus said is that you'd be filled and speak in other tongues. Let go of what other people said. Let go of what other people done. Take on what Jesus said today and say, I'm going to be filled. I'm going to be baptized. I'm going to live in the supernatural. I'm going to see the miracle power of God. I'm going to see lives change and transform. I'm going to operate in the prophetic. I'm going to see the Spirit of God flow through my life. Today, make a choice. Today, make that choice. It's a choice today. I'm not going to leave. I'm going to be endued with power from on high. Not power from the left or the right, but power from on high. Power from the presence of God. Power from the presence of the Holy Ghost. This is your season. This is the promise of the Father, and it's for you. It's for you. So one moment, we're going to open up these altars, and I'm going to tell you this. I don't know what God's going to do, but I know this. Those that are hungry, those that are thirsty, some of you might not even be able to wait for Pentecost. And you're going to get fresh touch, fresh fill, fresh power. But I got news. I'm praying for Pentecost. God, that everybody comes on Pentecost, they shall be filled.